Hey, it's uh, Vaughan in Nova Scotia. I'm gonna show you how to pack a glaze firing. Um, and uh, I've got everything ready. So I'm very organized. I've got my whole shelf full of pieces that are all white down. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, I've lined my stilts up. I got my shelves already cleaned up. Um, I have small things, kiln fillers over there that I just put in if I have a space. So it's, uh, you know, how to use the space on a shelf efficiently. Um, height pieces, I've got things put together with heights and such so that I can actually do a whole shelf of the same height so it shouldn't waste space. Um, so when you do a glaze firing, it's expensive, you've got to fire that thing up to a 2200 plus. Uh, you want to make sure you've got enough pieces in it to cover your costs and make a profit. So here you go. Let's see if I can get you looking right down in the kiln. This is a lot more intense than packing a bisque firing, which is what I showed you last time. Uh, let's see if we can get it over there a bit, come back a touch, it's just a little bit, oh, sank down a bit, there we go, tripods are tricky, so there you go, that's not too bad, alright, so I've already got kiln props in there, so I'm going to try and pack this one, um, basically, that one's white, uh, I signed the bottom, that's an underglaze that I used to sign with a paintbrush, uh, so that one's ready, place it down, now I'm going to try and get everything approximately within that height. Um, you know that I use stilts to fire my kilns if you're a beginner or somebody new to the channel. This is what I fire my pots on, little stilts with pins. Um, so I don't wipe the bottom of these. This is glazed on the bottom. I've found that customers over the years like the smoothness of a finished glazed bottom. So first things is get as many pieces in that shelf as you can and making sure that you don't get anything closer than an inch or so from the elements. I just wish that I was about an inch or two taller and I could reach the bottom without resting on the side of the kiln. Tight I've got one of these. And that one is a that mug is in the way and that jar is in the way. So just make sure that doesn't bounce off. So I can get this into another level. See if it'll fit now. Ooh, that jaw's a bit deep there too. So if I move that one out. So now we're good. So it means I can only get mugs on that side. Or well, maybe narrower jaws. I think this one's too wide. Yeah, that'll be too close to the elements. It fits, but it's too close to the element. So mugs, and I've got plenty. These are those 16 inch, inch beer tankards. It might be a little tall. That's what happens to the stilts. They actually bend over, so you just have to straighten them. I just put them, and you can just straighten them pretty easy. But the next firing, that one may well wear out, bend over too much. See if I can find a shorter mug. No, that's it. 
so let's hope this tank it isn't too tall. See the stilts on this one, it's still straight up. So place them on the piece, Make look, take a look underneath, make sure that they're at least about a centimeter, because these piece, pieces will shrink. Yeah, it fits, that's good. Moved a touch, straighten the stilt up. I like to put them on without, you know, before I lower it in there, but if I have to, I can just look and I can kind of estimate that the stilt is still way in, well inside. But anyway, so that's good. So everything fits. That one might be, that fits. This is about an inch stilt. So I can probably get away with a half inch stilt, not stilt. Well, it is called a stilt in a way. Kiln prop. It's a kiln prop. I have these circle ones that can go on the triangles as well. And these are half inch, so I can gain a little height, because that one tankard was level with the triangle. So now there'll be a centimeter below the next shelf. These are the advancer shells I get from I got from Bailey in Kingston, New York. They're actually expensive, but they are worth it. I use kiln wash on my props, as you can see in there, and that's what the white stuff is on the thing because it just uh, it allows the prop to be released very easily. So I've got these jars again. Um, but I also have, there's a lot of elements there. And the kiln props are here. I know where I've got them so I can feel them at the edges. So I've got to continue with them there. Uh, I can actually get in this shelf, because it's easy to reach now, because it's level down, some short ones and make it packed a bit denser with shelves here. And then I'll be a bit looser where there's no elements here. Because um, if I uh, have lots of uneven pieces, I want to make sure uh, I pack them heaviest where I've got some elements. Um, so I have a bunch of plates that are shallow. This one, the glaze curled up, but it's still good. So I'm putting it there. These are only, here's my kiln prop right at the edge there. These are all pre-wiped. Okay, so let's get one of my two inch props. Okay, so there, back washed them. So place them directly on top of the prop that's underneath. That is crucially important because you don't want to have a collapse. Although unlikely, it can happen. Your, if your shelf has a crack in it, especially with the old corderite shelves, and you pack them not with these supports, not directly on top of the one underneath, you might put stress on the shelf and it could crack in the firing. But then double, this is like a carpenter, double check that they're directly on top of each other. All right, measure twice, so you only have to cut once in carpentry. Okay, so we got that, I've got some spaces. And those are, maybe I can get a couple of little dishes there. Let's take it out, take a look. Ooh, be close. Move that one over there a bit. That one's very close, so I can't move over too much. Yep, I can just get that one in. This is too big for this spot. That's when, if you plan ahead, you can find some odd things and just put them in there. <clears throat> These are, you know, tiny little things, but people buy them just to put some change in, 
maybe put a ring in it. Um, <clears throat> space over there for a couple too. I have friends who have children who make little rabbits and hedgehogs out of clay. And they use those to fill in these spaces. There you go. I pre-wiped all my shells. Sanded them so there's no loose stuff. So I can just get these right down in there. <clears throat> and then we'll go for, because there's a gap of no elements. So then I'm going to go back to packing in. Make sure you don't get where the prop is. My jaws again. Leaving an inch from the edge. If you get it too close to the edge, you might burn the glaze and dry out the glaze in that place or boil the glaze if it gets too hot. I can put them straight down without checking because I've wiped everything ahead of time. So you should always check if you're not sure of yourself. Let's see what else we have here. And then it's all cheese dishes, which are a little taller. This is where it gets tricky. Okay, I fire on stilts. That one is too big a stilt because it will, it will, the piece will shrink and it will trap this in there. So we go to the next size down, place that in there. I'll put that on. That's way too tall, I think. So let's get a slightly shorter one. And then I look, and that's actually to just level with the thing. So maybe I do have to go with the other one. Although I could. Get one of my little one centimeter ones and just add it on the bottom there. And that's probably a little shorter, yep. But then I put this in. And that's actually a little close to the element, so let's move it back a bit. That's better. Same again, I've got another cheese dish top. What's well, a dish or cheese dish? So that, let me see if that's gonna touch there. No, it's just about, it's close, but the middle of the stilt is actually close to the actual pot itself. So um, I think I will go with a shorter one. So basically, you got to make sure that the stilts, the pins only touch. And that's at a bit of an angle, but it's fine. As long as it doesn't touch the actual kiln shelf at the rim of the butter dish. There you go. So it looks like we're going to be doing butter dishes mostly on this one. I can do a shorter one again. Always take a look. I'm making sure that the prop sticks up above the height of the rim. Turn it over. space. I wonder if I could sneak that one down there. That's a bit close. Put that one over there. Get my kiln props in next anyway. Packing a kiln shouldn't be stressful, so just get everything ahead of time sorted out you just you know, you can make some serious mistakes packing a kiln but if you get everything ahead of time everything pre-wiped and um, your shelves watch out for sharp points on your shelves that so you don't cut your hand that's very common doing these new advanced shelves things knock off them so easily that's less likely to happen but the old shelves sharp point bits of glaze would fall on and you'd chip them off and and then just rub them clean and you cut your hands. So be very careful because it's like razor sharp if, if you leave bits of glaze on these. 
and I've got room for one more bugger dish. Okay, so you can see how I've got that in there, that goes on there, check to make sure, hold the prop from underneath, yes I do, I was lucky, I mean they're kind of short for this shelf, there's the prop, little Stilton prop in there, I'm trying to use up the spaces. I've got a couple more little trays I can fit in. Yeah, my friend uh, Jim Reiner in Michigan used to have a daughter who used to make little animals. And she used to sell them at the, sh at the show in his booth. That's very cute. That was a long time ago. If you're listening, Molly. Hi, Molly. Anyway, let's see if we can get some of these on top now. All right, so then you need to check your height. I have these sticks. Is that one too short? Oh, it's just too short. I can eyeball it. Yeah, it's, it's fine anyway. I can tell that. But anyway, you want to check to make sure your pieces are not going to touch the shelf. And then you put the next shelf on. And then feel your props to make sure that the props are actually what's holding the shelf up and not maybe a handle that's sticking up higher. Because if you can't move the prop, you know, the, 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 the kiln prop is actually what's holding it. Okay, so that's sturdy. And now we've got height enough for tankards. So I can probably, if I'm lucky, I'll get a row of tankards all the way around the edge and I can get another bowl in the centre. Top of the other glaze. And there we go. That will be perfect. But there's a bunch of gaps underneath where I could sneak some stuff in. So these little trays are all pre wiped. Kiln fillers. It's not important to have these, but they might actually pay, all these little fillers might actually pay for the firing. So obviously the back of these has just been wiped off. And I think that's all I can fit of them. So let's put this down. I'm going to have to sneak a peek to see whether any of these kiln fillers are touching. So you just look down, they're a long way away actually. Yep, they're a good inch away from the other pieces. So that's how to pack a glaze firing. So like I said, if you felt like doing it, you can put these in your kiln. Um, and these I use in the gas kiln outside, but um, I've got room here, I could throw one in just as a check. Because I'm firing a bit low with the recycle clay, it'd be interesting to see what temperature the cone goes down. Okay, 
All right, so this is the glaze that we packed the other day, and it's now at uh, 95 degrees. Um, and we'll see what things look like in here. Remember, this is recycled clay, um, so I'm always nervous about that because basically you don't know if you've got salt bits in it from the, the people have walked into your studio, which would only be me, <laughs> under the, because nobody's been in here since COVID started. But um, anyway, this is a bowl in that bright blue. Look how nice and toasty that color of clay is. It's recycled. Uh, and it really, because it's got the red clay in it, the V-Mix in it, the uh, number 516 from Pottery Supply House, um, it really does, you know, make that a nice color. And it's just luck, what I'm making at that time during the recycle, that I'm throwing things in the recycle bin. But anyway, it's got the bright blue from uh, Mastering Cone 6 Glazes, but my own dark blue is over the top. And then I've got an oatmeal there as well. So dark blue is just when you add a little bit of cobalt oxide a bit more than they say for the other, you know, if you say 1%, you want, that's that blue there, I think. Uh, and then basically it's got rutile in too. Uh, and I think if you want to get darker, you'd add like 2% or 3% cobalt oxide, which is very powerful and you get a darker blue. Um, my wife makes these little trays. Um, and here you go, for kiln fillers. We just throw these in. Um, it's uh, generally speaking, these will pay for the firing. You know, if you've got enough of these little things squeezed in, um, you can actually, you know, add them all up and you might actually pay the electric bill for the firing. So there's a bunch of these little kiln fillers there. They're very cute, I mean. Um, um, I had a lot of requests for the green tankard um, that I've been making. Um, this is the big one. Um, so basically, um, this one holds a good 20, maybe 24 ounces of beer and all that. And I like doing the oatmeal on the top because it looks like the beer is frothing over the edge. But, um, but that's a pretty one. And uh, I'm knock my stilts off. There's the, once again, you've got the mouse brown, gray. Somebody asked me if it pinholes, and it doesn't. Uh, so I think the, if it's pinholing, it means you're over firing a little bit, is my guess. Those are nice tankers. That's doing the striping that I've been saying about this firing cycle. Um, I'll post the firing cycle underneath afterwards. It says 2205 uh, with 108 degrees rise during the last 200 degrees. Um, and um, what's the cone doing? Wow, look at that, 2205 and cone six went down. So that's interesting. I should uh, put a cone 7 in when I'm doing 2232 and see whether cone 6 is going down then. Um, or if, so cone 6 would go down at 2232 for sure because this is 2205. Uh, so maybe cone 7 would go down as well at 2232. Um, so we'll test that one next time. I'll have to get some cone 7s. But uh, anyway, here we go. These look really pretty. But that means that this gla these glazes have a wide range because this is cone. This is 2205 with cone six down, going to 2232, which is what I've been doing for, especially for Randy's red. Um, it basically means it's cone seven. And this is my oatmeal with my apple green over there, running just right. Yeah, we've been playing around with temperatures this year because I bought a test kill and um, just to see what's going on. But I'm surprised that cone six went down at 22.05. There you go. This is those turquoises, uh, the one that's been giving me the problem with cracking in uh, other pieces. Uh, the uh, Laguna B mix again basically was cracking uh, with this turquoise glaze. Bright blue. There you go. So 
some of these tankards are like German style, you know, because the, the German beers come in much bigger beer tankards, like, um, I'm not sure what they call them in Germany, but, um, but this one would hold easily 24 ounces. Another one of the oatmeal. You don't see the clay anywhere on my pieces when I do the stilts. Um, there you go. These glazes are all very stable. It's all mastering cone six glazes. Very stable. There you go. These are the really kind of serious drinkers. These are the jars that I took the lids out for garlic keepers. These are just basically, they have lids as well. So this is a successful firing. The richness, it's hard to tell, I think, but there's a lot of depth in that greeny gray olive color. And a lot of color variation in there. This has an hour soak at, um, 1750 with a slow cool at 125 degrees an hour down to 1750. So we do have a pretty successful firing here. So far nothing is actually running off. Well that one doesn't want to come out. Sometimes you leave the pin in, you gotta watch out. That came out okay though. Oh, this is pretty. Look at that. Beautiful. And this one, oh, this might be the white stoneware. This isn't the recycled clay. I made these a little earlier and they've been hanging around on the shelves waiting to be glazed. So this is that same, but it looks a lot cleaner without all the speckles in it. That's the recycled clay with my apple green over the top of the actual jade turquoise mat. No, oh, I haven't seen that deep green before. I have a dark green. I wonder if I use that over the top of it. I think I may have. More of these little kiln fillers. You know, so these sell for like seven, eight dollars. Just they like um, candy at the checkout counter. You know, I usually put a bunch of these around local, close to where I do all the sales. And if somebody's looking for a quick Christmas gift or a, a little office gift or something, it's nice. And there's the lids, how I fire the lids on the little stilts. And then of course I sat them on one of those so they're above the kiln shelf. Um, I fired the jars earlier, so I don't have the pots here, but uh, I may need a pair of pliers for this one. There you go, it came out. But, um, so basically what I'm doing, I've shown you before, is I fire like that in the kiln, so that you can fire the bottoms. And then you just have to tap them and they usually lift right out. You know, the recycled clay has a nice toasty color this time. So, And then we have the bottoms of the cheese dishes, butter dishes I should call them.
is the turquoise green one. So these are big enough for a cheese dish, but they could be a butter dish as well. Oh, that's interesting. I'm not sure how that happened. It looks like the color... Huh. I think I dipped the rim and it's kind of flaked a little bit, so it's not even. But um, I made it kind of spotty, spotty. It was basically the matte turquoise on that one, and I dipped another glaze over the rim. All right, so we really have nothing stuck to the kill shell. There's no bloating anywhere. Three more of those little dishes. Another one of my wife's little green trays. Those little green trays are therapy, I think. My wife is a painter. And later today, we have a very special firing going to be unloaded. She does these hand-painted pieces, um, and they're literally just paintings, one-of-a-kind paintings on clay. Um, and she does them only maybe, we do three, maybe four firings a year with those pieces in, because it takes a long time, and she doesn't do clay very often. She's a painter. So I'll unload that later. So that's a very special firing to look forward to. Okay. That's a pretty piece with the fluting on the rim. It slip, I did a little slip trailing in the glaze there, you can see, using my cranberry. I don't like the cranberry glaze that's in Cone 6 book, Mastering Cone 6 Glazes, but I do like it for doing detail and trim a little bit. But I don't, I, I just don't like it over a whole piece. It's, uh, it's a little, because it's got tin in the cranberry glaze, it's a very solid color. Um, and I don't think that it, it has no depth to it. As a, as a red, so, um, okay. This is very pretty, and this is the lid, I think. Yeah, there we go. So, this is the actual mouse gray with my oatmeal over the top. So far, not a single failure. No bloating in any of the glazes. It is interesting because um, now I'm firing, I've noticed this is cone six with this. Uh, so my recycled clay was bloating because it was going above cone six, I guess. But it, this is one of my 16 ounce beer tankers. Here's the difference. This one is 16 ounces and it's right next to that one. So that's why I'm saying you have at least 24 ounces in here, if not 30. <laughs> It's a big tanker. You don't go to the bar very often when you get one of those filled, you know, so. And if you're drinking coffee out of it, you get a lot of work done. So, but you don't have to go back to the coffee pot very often. And then the rest of these in here, I haven't decided to do it yet. Um, but I've been thinking about putting a few pieces on tie you up for that. But um, here you go, I'll turn this around. I have a bunch of large jars um, that are gonna be glazed this week, and I'll be firing those. And I'm doing a video on how to make those. Um, so, um, but that's coming up. Um, I'm not posting that till I've done it complete right through to the end of the glazing. So, uh, all right, so um, just, you know, let me know if you have any questions and, um, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you in the next video. All right. Take care. Bye.